Well, we know obviously customers buy from you again. They buy more. Sometimes they identify with you. You know, they wear that Bass Pro Shop hat or they buy, <laughs> wear that Harley Davidson jacket. I, I got a friend of mine who wears a Harley Davidson jacket all the time. Uh, he even wears it to church. That ain't right. And sometimes we know they are loyal because they trust us. They give us a wider berth to make mistakes, which is really important because as you grow and improve, you're going to make mistakes sometimes. And isn't it great to have a loyal customer base that will give you that opportunity, that berth to, to, to make mistakes. But I think there's a pinnacle higher than that, and that is a customer who becomes your advocate. Whether it's ear to ear, face to face, or click to click, they can't wait to remark about you. Now, what I'm not talking about here is a recommendation. Yeah, I'd recommend Westfield Insurance. That's not what I'm talking about. There's a level even higher than that. And I think it comes with this. And I'm going to ask you to recall a positive service experience that was so profound, so impactful, that you couldn't wait to story it. You couldn't wait to tell somebody about, you're not going to believe what happened to me. So if you recall that, what were the features of that experience? Now, we've been studying this to figure out what were the features that tend to make people want to tell stories about us. And we find they wind up in one of five areas. And those are the things we're going to talk about, the features that make experiences profoundly remarkable. They enchant, they enlist, they enlighten, they make it easy, and they're engraved. And you'll learn a little bit about what that means. Now, let's take a look at it about why this is important. Because we know today, customers, all customers, are highly stimulated and often entertained. And so that raises the, the expectations they have. Some research shows customer expectations go up about 30% a year because they don't just compare you to other insurance companies, obviously, they care you to, compare you to anybody creating great experiences that they enjoy. Let me give you a fun example. There was a large brokerage firm that decided to have fun with their phone system. You know, the one punch three if you want this, punch two if you want this. They decided to add punch eight if you want to hear a duck quack. Guess what? Over a million people called every week just to hear the dang duck. It was jamming their system, costing them a fortune. They finally had to take it out. Now, what's the punchline? The punchline is customers today are bored. Apparently, for some of them, it doesn't take a whole lot to entertain them. But think about what is that hat all about? What does that look like? What does that look like? Let me give you an example of what it looks like. My wife has a new car, loves this new car, traded in for uh, her old car for a new car. And you know what? A week after she had her new car, she turned on the radio for the first time and discovered they had programmed in her radio stations from her trade-in. Now, what do you think she talks about? The car or the radio? Yeah, the radio. And Lord, I think what she paid for that car. Now, think about that. Think about that, something that was totally unexpected, something was simple, and finally, something that was appropriate. What can you do to the experience of those you serve to make it, I can't wait to tell a story about it. Easy means flow. Easy means how do I manage it in such a way that my customer has an easy route to the solution, the outcome they want. How do I make that easy? It's not about simple. We can handle complex. It's about, does it make sense? Does it make sense? You know, Ted Levitt says, nobody ever bought a quarter inch drill bit because so, that's what they really wanted. Nobody's ever said, I've always wanted a quarter inch drill bit. As soon as I buy one, I'm going to frame it and hang it on the wall in my living room. What do they really want? Quarter inch hole. And what they really like to do is go shoo, get that hole, but they don't get to do it that way, except on Star Trek. You know, Captain Kirk do that. Rest of us got to get in the truck, go down to the hardware store, find the drill bit section, deal with the clerk, deal with the cash register, come home, find the drill, find the chuck, just to get a hole. It's a hole your customers want, and they just soon skip your process. Do you ever have customers just call you up and ask for the process? No, I don't really need anything. Just came by to see maybe you had some forms I could fill out. 
No, 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 I don't really need anything. I just called up to see maybe you could put me on hold. <laughs> Customers want to skip your process. You know what they want is an easy flow, an easy flow to the getting their outcome, and they want those that make sense. We're fine with some sort of steps we have to go through if they make sense to the customer. Let me give you an example of doesn't make any sense. I stopped at a fast food restaurant not far from where I live. We'll call it Burger Queen, but you know who I'm talking about. And I got in the drive-in. I went up to a little speaker thing. I told the individual I'd like a double Whopper and order fries and small Coke. He read the order back. I said, yeah, that's correct. However, I said, instead of getting ketchup with my French fries, I'd like some of that barbecue sauce. He said, no. The barbecue sauce comes with the chicken tenders. I said, that's okay. I'll be glad to buy some of that barbecue sauce. He said, no. The barbecue sauce is free. I said, terrific. I'll have some of my French fries. He said, no. The barbecue sauce comes with the chicken tenders. I said, aren't you the restaurant that promises have it your way? He said, that only applies to hamburgers. <laughs> Tilt. See, that didn't make any sense. So what I'm saying is we've got to say, does it make sense to the customer? What we rail about is it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. And it leaves us anxious. You know, we speak so much about the physical comfort. We miss sometimes the emotional comfort. We've got to make it emotionally comfortable. This is Amy, who's on my team, and she went to Hawaii with her two teenage boys and her husband this past summer. Teenage boys get bored in 20 minutes, and they all were ready to go hang gliding. I mean, uh, uh, parasailing. How many of you have been parasailing? Now, if you've ever been parasailing, you know you could be drunk, and you'd be fine. You could be co totally unconscious, and you'd be fine. It's not like hang gliding or skydiving. They just harness you up. Somebody hits that engine and a boat and you go up in there and you got a pretty view. Nothing could be more effortless than parasailing. But if you take a look at Amy's face, <laughs> you sort of get an idea. It might be effortless, but it's not without angst. We got to find a way to say, I want to make sure it's angst free.